Full self driving is finally here. On this video, I'll go over whether the soon to be $10,000 hefty price tag on the Tesla full self driving worth it or is basic autopilot that comes with every Tesla enough. Now, let's get started with basic autopilot. I drive a 2020 Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus and I bought this car at the end of January and as most of you know, every car after 2019 December comes in with basic autopilot and also it has the full self-driving hardware already installed in the car. So if I wanted to upgrade to full self-driving, all I have to do is go to my app and pay 10,600 Canadian dollars. Or if you're in the US, it's $8,000 right now. And also Elon has mentioned that this $8,000 is going to turn into $10,000 soon. So for us Canadians, $10,600 is going to turn into $13,200, which I'm estimating. So this is what autopilot looks like. It'll show you that it's seeing all the cars here. And also I have full self-driving visualization preview turned on so it can see the lights as well. So they're green right now. So in the screen, you'll see that they're green as well. It can see that truck merging in as well. So if I need to put my car on autopilot, my car needs to see the lane lines physically. And then I'll get an indicator here, a steering icon indicator here saying that I can put it into autopilot. So all I have to do is push down twice and the car will now go into autopilot. So I don't have to steer or I don't have to press the accelerator or the brakes and the car is going to do everything by itself. So my, in basic autopilot, my car is going to stay in one lane, it's gonna be following that car or if there's no car, it's gonna be following the speed limit and staying in one single lane. Now, this is one of the things that you can't get in basic autopilot. You don't have auto change lanes. So if you wanted to change lanes, you'd have to physically take the car off of autopilot and then signal and then turn lanes and then once you're once you have changed your lanes, you can just put the car back into autopilot again. Now, I'll link a video up here where I'll show you guys last winter where I just put the car into autopilot and my car did 99% of the trip. All I had to do is change lanes, which took like five seconds and that was it. And the car does 99% of the driving, especially in rush hour when you don't really need to be changing lanes that much, especially in Winnipeg, you're just in one lane and that's it. The car does 99% of the driving. So that's one of the reasons that I haven't really opted in for full self driving yet, just because I don't see its worth or its value at $10,000 yet. Now let's analyze a full self driving video posted by James Locke. I'll link his profile down in the description box as well. So you can go to his profile and check out his full 40 minute video of him driving and testing out the full self driving beta. The steering icon also means that you don't really need lane lines to activate full self driving. You can already see a difference with basic autopilot as the car automatically starts to change lanes and as it approaches the red light, it comes to a complete stop for the lights to go green again. After these set of lights, if you had basic autopilot, uh, it could have handled the drive until here now it's clearly in a turning lane and if you had basic autopilot you'd have to signal right and then change the lanes yourself whereas this car automatically changes the lane to the left and it sees that the light went yellow and then red so it stopped for the lights as well which basic autopilot would not have done also my tesla with basic autopilot could not have made this turning so in my car with basic autopilot, I would have to take a similar turning like this by myself. And as soon as I got into a road with lane lines again, I could put it in back into autopilot. Now my basic autopilot could have handled this part of the drive as well. Even this construction zone. So you can see that the full self driving is now it, it did not indicate when it was switching lanes. So that's one of the things that my basic autopilot does not do either. So there's mu not much of a difference either. I'll show you guys a footage where my basic autopilot does the same thing. So as I approach a construction zone with my Tesla with basic autopilot, you can see how basic autopilot acts similarly to full self-driving. You can see that the Tesla is ignoring the lane lines and it's following the direction of the cones in the construction zone. Then my Tesla continued to follow the direction 
off the cones instead of the lean lines until the construction zone ended. If you look closely, you can see that the speed limit set is 40, but the Tesla automatically slows down to a 33 miles per hour. This can be seen on my Tesla Basic Autopilot as well. This feature is not unique to only full self-driving. My Tesla Basic Autopilot has been seen to slow down in construction zones as well as in turnings. Then the Tesla continues on full autopilot. It stops for red light, which my basic autopilot would not have done. It stops this. My basic autopilot could have handled because just because there's a car in front of him. And then when the light goes green, it would have continued on. And then I, they're signaling for lane change, which my basic autopilot would not have done. So that's something that you couldn't do in basic autopilot either. And... They go on and on and on and on and they come to a red light. Now this type of turning is very interesting. The full self driving can easily make this turn. It can stay on the lane. It can see the lane line markings. And now let me take you to my basic autopilot experience. Look how my Tesla basic autopilot does with a similar left turning. It sees the lanes properly. It sees all the cars around it and I put my hands on the wheel just in case, but it manages to make that left turn without wanting my attention. But basic autopilot is not as good as full self-driving, which is why it can't make those left turnings all the time. Tesla will sound a loud alarm to get your attention to take control. Tesla will still try its best to not steer into anyone. And then when it sees the lane lines again, it seems that it's keeping the car in lane again. And it, it's supposed to slow down when it sounds that loud alarm. But I put my foot into the accelerator to see what the Tesla does. And then after I, put, I gave my screaming autopilot some attention, you can see that the Tesla can be put into autopilot as indicated by the steering icon. Then after the left turning, my Tesla would have kept on going if I put it into basic autopilot. It would not have done this lane change and it would not have stopped for this light. And then when the lights went green, I'll have to manually put it into basic autopilot. It would have continued until it would have continued through this green light as well, just because I'll only have to keep attention if it's red. And then here it's red. I would have to take the Tesla out of autopilot as there is no car in front of me and then stop it manually. And when the lights go green, I would have accelerated and moved over to the slow lane so that people behind me can pass me on the left. Okay, and there. it seems that the Tesla full self-driving was doing that, but he had to intervene and move over quick just because this Corvette wanted to race him. But obviously he was shooting a YouTube video and he was testing out his full self-driving, so he wouldn't. But if you guys want to see me race a Corvette, I'll link a video up here. So right now, my car with basic autopilot would have done the exact same thing that the full self driving is doing right now. It's staying on one lane and it's just driving and maintaining the lane lines. And then even on these lights, it's green. So I wouldn't have had to intervene and the Tesla would have kept on going until here. So this is a sharp right turn and my Tesla definitely would not be able to do this turning. It seems that full self-driving is driving very cautiously and it looks like it's behind a trailer, but yeah, look at that. Full self-driving just requested for a lane change and it's changing to the left lane so that it can overtake that truck. So my basic autopilot would not have done that either, but my basic autopilot would have slowed down for those cyclists. So it changed lanes and I tried to overtake that truck, but it was going the speed limit or more than the speed limit then. And full self-driving did not slow down and move over to the right lane just because it wanted to make this left turn over here. Now, this is where it gets real interesting. Your car has to slow down and yield to the oncoming traffic. And it seems that full self-driving was doing that until the person had to intervene and then accelerate just because the Tesla was moving really slow and there were cars coming at 55 miles an hour towards him. So it looks like that the full self-driving is not available anymore just because he moved into the highway. So only navigate on autopilot is available. So you guys have seen 
plenty of videos on navigator on autopilot but let's say you didn't have navigator on autopilot uh which is an which was an extra five thousand dollar upgrade you'd have to just choose one lane and stay in the in that lane and if you needed to change lanes you'd have to do it for it'll take you like five seconds to change that lane you could change your lanes manually and stay on that lane I'll link a video up here where uh, where I almost fall asleep on basic autopilot in the highway just because it's so boring. Y you barely do any of the driving when you're in the highway, especially even on basic autopilot. So this is something that you can consider on whether you need to get full self driving or navigate on autopilot instead of the free basic autopilot. The rest of the video is pretty boring. It's just simple highway driving. So I'll stop here. I hope this video helps you guys answer some of the questions that you had and the differences between basic autopilot and full self-driving. Personally, I think the technology is phenomenal. It's definitely a right step towards the future, but I'm not willing to spend that $10,000 upfront cost to upgrade to full self-driving. Also, two days ago on Wednesday in Tesla Peg News, I covered that Elon did tweet out that he's thinking of doing a month by month subscription basis on the full self driving. So that's definitely something that we can look forward to. So the people who do not want to pay that $10,000 upfront cost, we can think about getting a subscription for Tesla full self driving that we can use on a month by month basis. That's all for today's video. And as always, if you like this video, please smash that like button. And also, if you're new to the channel, subscribe and hit the bell notification button to get notified when I upload every week. I pretty much upload every two to three times per week and I post short videos almost every day. So keep an eye out on my channel for more and more informative Tesla content in the future. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Goodbye.